You've tuned into the Bellingham Podcast for the first episode of 2018, episode 62. From the city by the sailor sea, I am AJ Barset. Starting off fresh and clean, I am Chris Powell. On this episode, we're recapping 2017 and we're resuming part two of our conversation about trends that we spotted around the world and in technology and in life. Welcome to a new year. Previously on the Bellingham Podcast, we need to gravitate around the kitchen uh, and have it be an all-family thing. That way more, I don't know, more generations understand where their food is coming from. Uh, let's shift gears a little bit. Lifestyle brands. Yes. And that's where we join you here on the second episode, the first episode of 2018. Welcome to episode 62. We don't just make products anymore. We make a lifestyle. Of course, <laughs> because that's how you gain someone to come back and buy stuff from you. Right. It's it's not about it's and again, so immediately I gravitate towards watches. Big shock, right? Mm-hmm. Like this is this has been a sketch for watch brands since the inception. You know, you wear you wear a Rolex Explorer so that you can be the person that summits. Mount Everest when you go to the office. Like, you know, this is something that they put into a lot of their thing, uh, their brand, rather. There is this persona where you put on something, whether it's a brand of clothing, a watch, uh, uh, a piece of technology, as we've mm. talked about on the show. Yep. Um, and this is an interesting trend because, like, in the beginning of 2017, we see this big boom of lifestyle brands. And at the end of 2017, we're starting to see more uh, more of the, the youthful generation. I don't want to say millennial because I don't know if we're in or out of that trend yet going away from labels sometimes. So it's kind of a push and pull in just one year. Yeah. Everlane is starting to really get, uh, hot as far as, uh, the, 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 the logo uh, attire. And you know, you see this, who are you representing? Do you have what looks like an X, which is under armor? Do you have an upside down V, which could be Lululemon? Who do you subscribe to? If you have a brushed aluminum laptop uh, facing people with a glowing logo. They're no longer glowing now. uh, Well, but here's the thing. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's a new shiny or lack thereof. But, you know, I'm sure Android users, whenever they see that logo, they're like, eh, Apple users. And Apple users, whenever they see, it's like, who are you affiliated with? Who are you trying to uh, market for indirectly? And, uh you know, it, it's it's big, but also there may be a trend where it's getting away from a label and you don't want to be criticized since there are so many places out there that if you voice any kind of opinion, you're going to get smacked down. Right. Maybe this is a, a reaction where if I, I, I don't want to wear anything that might cause people to think any less of me. Right. Um, newsflash. We are not in high school anymore. You do not. I, I'm serious. Yeah. Like this is. A lot of 2017 for me is like, did we not learn all of this in high school? You do not like, I don't know. I just, it's, I feel like it's the, the cool kids versus the geeks versus the, uh, the debate team. I don't know. Like that, that's kind of how I feel 2017 has been, uh, whether it's, it's, it's tech or these topics or whatever, uh, did we not learn? Like you do not have to, uh, I don't know. You don't have to emulate that, that one cool kid, uh, on campus. Because all the cool kids played Knowledge Bowl in high school. Smash Bros, baby. I'm just saying. Like, <laughs> I just, I don't know. Um, I feel like in each of our little subculture communities that we have in, in in the United States, you know, you don't have to. I feel like we need to be more comfortable in our own skin. And I mean that literally because it's not just about, I mean, we had body perceptions, which kind of more of a later trend in, in 2017, but by our new, uh, be comfortable in our own skin. I mean, what we're wearing, what we are having on us and feeling like that is a part of, uh, what, what is the, what's the, I have an affinity for, you hear that a lot in 2017. Oh, I have a real affinity for Apple. Yeah. They're a company. They're market. They're marketing to you. Like it's a nonverbal message that we are portraying and, and broadcasting out there. Because we, if we don't have Facebook or if we don't have social media, uh, there's other ways of being able to say what you like. 
That's okay. Perfect. That's that's what I was looking for. You do not have to be envious of that Instagrammer that you follow. I guess that's the thing that I want to sum up for 2017 is whether it's a destination, uh, a, a piece of clothing, that handbag, watch, whatever. Appreciate what the thing is that somebody crafted. And this is something that's more of a t- end of 2017 for me. Um, but again, appreciating what the thing is, not lusting after it. Yep, absolutely. All right, what's next? Uh, you hit on it a, uh, really uh, briefly. Um, news and social media. This yeah. was this was the year of people taking hiatuses for for various reasons, whether it's political or whatever. And going into this, uh, I am going to hit on the core. I want to unshackle the topic of. Um, news and social media. I'm not going to use the the buzzwords that you hear in the news regarding um, whether it is true or false. You know what we're talking about. Or social media with regards to whatever. Here's the thing. Um, one of the things as technologists, and I'm, I'm doing, I'm putting my objective hat on here as a technologist. We hear this all the time where social media drains me or uh, I have to just get off of Facebook for a while. Matter of fact, I had somebody recently write in uh, saying like, you know, I had to get off Facebook for a while. And I get that. I feel you. And it's one of those things where on the show, uh, this is what we talk about. You know, when you're using a social media platform and you have such a wide variety of people that you follow or you invite into your network, you're also inviting ads and whoever wants to purchase those ads, they get your eyeballs. Whether that is right, wrong, or different, that is the business model. You have to acknowledge that for what it is. If you want to share things, use a different method and close down your loops. That is the first and foremost thing. I'm thinking that uh, there's everyone has to go on a detox every now and then because if you get so in, if you're in the pool for a long time, you're going to get uh, the prune hens. And you got to be able to get out and get a little bit of perspective because the body cannot handle that kind of uh, amount of digital stimuli in your brain and what you're reading before it needs to be. It will make you uh, disconnect yeah. in, in various ways. And to be able to take a, uh, a digital detox or to turn off social media for a while, we're being surrounded by an echo chamber of news that is hitting every website and it's just being propagated in a, in a megaphone feedback loop that, uh, yes, we know what's going on. We don't need to talk about what made today's headlines. And you know what I'm talking about today. Oh, that happened. Oh, my goodness. And it's, <clears throat> you, you got to be able to unplug yeah. for a while. And, and, and the other thing that feeds this is we have a lot of speculatory hype. You know, this is something that we try to assuage here on our show is, yes, if we speculate, it's usually forecasting and we stick to the topics. We're not going to say, oh, the Internet is going to be closing down because of this or I don't know the the whole sensational headline thing. That is a whole other topic. But one of the things that we hear time and time again is fatigue and frustration around the politics sphere and news. Uh, this last year at Ted Woman 2017, yes, you heard right, Ted, that those guys that do really cool spiels, Ted Women 2017, there was a really cool, we use the term echo chamber a lot because that's kind of what we hear in the tech sphere. Another way of calling this is called a filter bubble. Um, there's a really cool TED Talk. There's a show, on, uh, there's a link in the show notes by Joan Blades and John Gable. Um, I'm going to read a little bit of a blurb so that you kind of understand what the this TED Talk is. Uh, Joan Blades and John Gable want you to make friends with the people who vote differently than you do. What? I know, right? Uh, A pair of political opposites. You have a... I I don't want to use the term extreme left, extreme right, but I just want to show the polarity here. You have Joan that is on the extreme left. You have John who's on the extreme right. Uh, A pair of political opposites and two longtime pals... Uh, know the value of engaging in honest conversations with people you don't immediately agree with. Join them in explaining how they bridge the gaps of understanding between two people in opposite sides on the political spectrum and create uh, opportunities for mutual listening and consideration. Now, here's the thing. You may know John Gables from his previous work. He worked on this thing called Netscape Navigator. So he's a geek. Yes. um, And more of a conservative. You have uh, Joan, who is uh, more of a liberal, and she had some other uh, things that she did in her repertoire. Uh, But John uh, made this thing called All Sides. It's an engine, and uh, I don't want to say it's a news outlet. He's using algorithmic 
uh, and filtering technology to create a website um, that's called allsides.com. And uh, I have a link in the show notes where they have what he is calling unbiased, balanced news. Now, here's the thing, um, not to get on a political side topic of this whole thing of, oh, is the is the news unbiased? He is making a website basically that has, if you remember Dig, where you have a vote, down vote, that type of a thing, where you have a, a filtered algorithm that takes all of the news outlets and has a normalization algorithm. Basically means that the programmers versus the community and the average of it, you get a uh, far left, far right, centrist, or kind of mildly left, mildly right. And what's cool is what for whatever the topic is or the headline is, you will see three articles of three different outlets, left, center, right. And you can click on it and read all three views from the same topic. Uh, I'm not saying that we're not endorsing this or, or promoting this as a service, but, but it's worth a look. It is worth a look because one of the things that we, you and I hear about is, you know, oh, I get all my news on Facebook. Well, again, Facebook is also algorithmic to the contrary of this, where if you click on a lot of left news or if you click on a lot of right news, you typically see much of the same thing. And that's what this, this Ted talk at Ted women 2017 talked about. This is a avenue for people to click on it and see topics, current and news, whether it's political or sports, it doesn't matter. Like they have various things. You can use this as a way to maybe become more inter- informed of how things lean left and right. And you can see, you can vote. I did. I voted on some of their uh, outlets um, saying that, oh, I think this is more centrist than it is leftist or rightist. You can participate. And I just thought it was an interesting avenue to kind of open up this concept of social media news and attention grabbing stuff and being able to be more as an informed reader and from the participation standpoint, that's the thing I liked about dig dig was very social news. You know, Kevin Rose, if you're listening, I think you're still the goods. Um, I wish dig was still Serka my era. And this is kind of just ratcheting it up one. Could this be uh, considered, it could all sides be considered uh, crowdsourcing the news with this level of participation? Or am I using that term incorrectly? A little bit incorrectly. It's uh, crowdsourcing the grading of news. So the news is still being produced by New York Times, Daily Beast, whomever, and it gets thrown into the engine so that uh, typically it is well known what CNN is leaning towards, what Fox is leaning towards. That algorithm goes against what the community says it is by. Now, I do not know. Again, I, I did not do a full look into John's work with all sides. I, there was this thing called the uh, the dig effect where people would game the dig algorithm. It appears there are some stop gaps with this algorithm. I don't know what the algorithm is in all sides. But again, it is just a, a tool for the arsenal where if you read a topic and you're like, oh, this infuriates me. Maybe you can take a look at the site and see what the other views behind it are, because if you are in a bubble, that's the whole stick about this. If you're in the same, you read the same thing all of the same time, you uh, you can get a little jaded. You can't have chicken all the time for your diet. You got to have a little bit of fish and yeah, sorry kids, you got to have a little bit of liver uh, along with your fruits and vegetables and a balanced diet. The balance is what we're talking about. So you need to be able to, it's, it's a seesaw. If you are always on the bottom, no one's going to be getting you to go up and down in the seesaw with another perspective. Can I, can I, uh, tangent just slightly a little bit, please? That's what this show's about. Uh, so AJ, you mentioned the gamification, like the dig effect and how that can be kind of ratcheted in in, and, uh, adjusted to benefit some people's agendas. One thing that I'm noticing with, uh, Amazon, as we are looking with, uh, online reviews of products. This is another instance that I'm seeing whenever you, you know, I've always said, look for the product that has thousands of people uh, rating it four to five stars. That usually is a good indication. Sorry, folks, I'm going to retract those words because now I'm seeing that there's a whole lot of one-lined quick reviews by, oh, I don't know, bots. And this is now not from, you know, they'll have Amazon verified buyer or something like that. But it's another instance that we need to be cautious about what we are reading and viewing this as the truth or as verifiable, legitimate uh, information. Yeah. Cross-referencing. Like this is something that you and I do time to time again. We see a tech topic. I mean, in the early parts of our show, that's what we were kind of kind of priding ourselves on is, you know, here's the new shiny. Here's the f- pro con 
And yes, it's god awful expensive, but cry but by the best cry once type of thing. Like we had a framework, and when it comes to news and social media, we have become a little complacent in just assuming that what we are seeing is true and verified. And what we are saying here on the show is here is an avenue of trying to cross reference something. Yeah. You know, um, you don't have to be for or against it. It's just a way to hopefully bring discourse and as opposed to vitriol here comes another tv reference the truth is out there we need to seek it and we need to do the research even though we don't have a lot of time yeah. anymore for that we have to do the work to be able to get the right end result for what we're looking for whether it's a product whether it's uh, learning about news to be able to be coherent and uh, well informed in today's age we got to be able to take time to do that thanks fox Mulder. there you go so that, that, that wraps up for trends from the beginning and uh, trends of 2017. Uh, let's look at what wrapped up 2017. Um, cord cutting. Yes. This is still something that's still alive and kicking. <laughs> Thank goodness. Um, more and more services a la carte. We got Amazon, uh, who basically, if you want to purchase stars, you can purchase stars package through Amazon and stream it through the Amazon app. When you say stars, you're talking about the TV channel. Yeah, a and &E, all this other jazz. And so you're not uh, required to be going in with Comcast. Right. This is, what, what do you call that? What is it, a pie? No, a la carte right. television. And uh, I mean, the, I think that's great. And again, this kind of unshackles from the topic of uh, yeah, paying for the content that you want to watch, not mm -hmm. having all of it and missing most of it. For those of you that don't need three C-SPAN channels in your television package, now you may have an alternative. Yep. Uh, with this, we also, especially at the time of this recording, the whole net neutrality debate. I mean, that is something that is going to continue into 2018 for obvious reasons. The one thing I want to unshackle from this, again, it's a political fueled thing. But here's the, the topic that I, I'm hoping will get resolved in 2018. When we talk about net neutrality, there is net neutrality and there is infrastructure. They are not the same thing. This is something that as, te uh, as technologists, um, I'm, maybe I'm speaking for you, but it drives me bonkers because net neutrality is the treating of ones and zeros fairly equally and without any throttling or anything like that. That is net neutrality. Everything is treated on par. Infrastructure is horrid in the United States. I will be the first to tell you that. I know people that are in rural America. They pay for 10 megabits down. They get to. Our infrastructure is in dire need. Absolutely. Absolutely. That is not net neutrality. Okay? okay. That is just crappy pipes. Okay. Like that's, we need to parse that out. And beyond all of the, 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 the political grandstanding and stuff, net neutrality is not defined in our country. We have India. You can, uh, I, I heard that India is uh, on the books to try to define as a country what new, net neutrality is within their borders. We do not have a term for that. Um, we've seen this time and time again come up with the FCC for many, uh, for, for, for decades. We do not have the definition of internet service. We have information systems under the FCC. We have telecommunications. We have all of this other stuff, but internet itself and what it is, is not defined. And I think that's, that's the trouble. I'm, I'm, I'm hoping that that does get remedied in 2018. I don't think it will. But I'm hoping it does, because I think that would open up, much like I just talked about in the, the last bit, discussion. Oh, we know what internet is. It is this. Again, there's a lot of other political back and forth, but I think if you unshackle the topic of net neutrality, the treating of ones and zeros equally, and infrastructure as two separate topics, I think we can have better discourse of, around that issue. You need to be able to define the topic that you're going to be disagreeing about first. Right. It's like, AJ, I'm upset with you. No, you're not talking about that. Blah, blah, blah. Right. I just, I think it's, I don't know. Let's maybe... get clearer about the, the parameters of that. Right. Definitely. And and again, when it comes to net neutrality, like that's, that's it. Um, you know, yeah, you can, you can, I put a link in the show notes. You can see what every, uh, what everything uh, from the FCC, the horse's mouth, you can see what everybody's talking about using the restoring internet freedom, whatever you want to call it, ruling, whatever they're doing. Uh, it's in there. Uh, but again, for me as a technologist, scraping away all of the, the, the political back and forth from both sides, that is how I unshackle that topic. Net neutrality, ones and zeros infrastructure. Let's treat those two as two separate topics and let's talk about all it. All right. Sounds good. 
Dude, this whole cryptocurrency thing. Yeah, um, we, we've got a new headline uh, buzzword right now. It's called Bitcoin, and it's called Ethereum, and it's called Litecoin. What? Uh, <laughs> and so, River. So, and yeah, a whole lot of Ripple. And what ripple, are all these it. words? And here's the thing. There are so many uh, headlines dedicated to... The, it's starting to infiltrate into the big news... Uh, websites yeah. where you would get your news. Everyone wants to know, what is this? Well, this is the show to learn about, folks. <laughs> uh, you, 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 you all know how to do the Google, uh, but here's the one thing that you want to be uh, considering. Uh, this is something to approach with a lot of caution. Uh, you want, Like with investing in stocks and bonds, you may want to double check and be very aware of how you are in spending any money in buying cryptocurrency and that's it's not really like quarters and dollars and paper money and everything like that it can be sold and converted into that through computer transactions but at this point it's a whole lot of people being uh, speculative about a digital resource yeah and that uh that share in microsoft that share in Apple's corporation that you would get through an investment program, it's not quite the same. Uh, there's, it's, it's a very difficult topic, but we're going to be seeing a lot more headlines about a meteoric rise yeah. or a huge crash or the volatility. And let's, let's boil this down. Yep. You and I have talked about this for probably 30 of the 60 episodes. This is FOMO. Yeah. This is fear of missing out. This is the me too. Oh, I've, I, I had it and I, I, I did an experiment. I wanted to see what the process was because, you know, mm -hmm. in most cases, I'll go first. Yeah. I'll take the bullet so I can tell you about it. Well, I invested a little bit of money in cryptocurrency and I started to get really like, oh my goodness, look at the price as how it's uh, increasing. Ooh, money, cashola, dollar signs. It was, it was not a good situation. And, Full disclosure, I sold my Bitcoin wallet after about two months of a pretty decent rise, mm -hmm. double my money. I have a pittance left mm -hmm. of what I sold it for. Uh, but it's it's something that uh, I got wrapped up in missing out on a chance to get found money. It's like an ATM that is spitting out $20 bills and you're walking by it and I'm like, you, would you stop to pick some up? Mm -hmm. Most people would. Mm -hmm. I see something that is at one price and I'm seeing it g gain a percentage mm -hmm. better than my retirement investment vehicles in one work day. Right. I kind of got that little lizard brain, that little voice in my head jumping up and down and screaming saying, buy stuff, Chris. <laughs> and I <laughs> took, I took a little bit of cash and uh, did that. It, I was lucky that I didn't, lose my money on it, but we need to be very careful about how we are investing in something that is not regulated yeah. and is wide decentralized. open, decentralized. And hey, guess what, folks? There's a lot of smart people that know how to hack and steal your wallet uh, th that you contain your Bitcoin resources. Right. You got to be careful. Yeah. It just kind of like, again, kind of like the term net neutrality uh, or the internet itself. With cryptocurrency, we do not have a definition of what this is. Uh, it is not a stock. Like you were using the, uh, the analogy of having a company and buying stock. It's not the same thing. Here's the scary part. At the end of 2017, at the time of this recording, we have companies offering ICOs. We've heard of IPOs, initial public offerings, where you publicly offer stock. You have initial coin offerings. Um, I have a link in the show notes of what that is. Chris and I are not accountants, nor uh, CPAs, nor do you, we play one on podcasts. You definitely don't want to nope. consider me for financial advice. No, nope. financial advice, not us. Uh, but there's this concept of what's called tokenization of of uh, of companies. Uh, Indiegogo has an ICO. Um, again, like there's there's so much revolving around this thing that is. Uh, I won't just say in undefined, but ill-defined. I think in the past, if you would have spent a hundred bucks on Apple stock back when it was around ten yeah, bucks I before the thought the, exercise, so, and uh, the thought exercise, that's what got me. Right. Everyone wants to get in on the ground floor. Everyone wants to be part of like I got in 1.0 uh, days before it's huge. Right. And and then look at the pile of paper money that I can that I'm now worth. Right. That's what's appealing to so many people. Right. And I got sucked into it and I'm like, no, nah, I wrote about it in my Quiet Conversations newsletter. It's just not for me. No, and but okay. So the other thing about 
cryptocurrency, though the, there's a huge volatility swing about it. Uh, if you do a Google search of simply about three years ago, just type in Mount Gox Bitcoin crash. And the Gox is G-O-X, right? Yes. Yeah. And that was the thing where you know, an exchange got hit. Uh, an exchange, I put that as an air quotes. You know, this is something that we, uh, there's a lot of people getting in on this and it's not the ground floor. You've already missed the ground floor. Yeah, okay. Um, that's why I say it's me too. Like, oh, I want to get into this. Me too, me too. Mm -hmm. No, no, no. That's not that, that, that ship has sailed. You can use what analogy you want. We have a ton of people speculating uh, on what this is. There is no standard. Like you just said, there is Bitcoin, there's Ethereum, there's Litecoin, and you can cross change all of, interchange all of these and, 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 and. This is, uh, this is the dial up days. This is the internet wild, wild west. Things are slow. There's the underlying, again, I'm going to unshackle here. I'm going to uh, take the politics out of all of this cryptocurrency and unshackle it. The underpinning of this is called the blockchain. The blockchain is the technology behind this. And that has a lot of implications. Blockchain is here to stay. It's for me, blockchain is the equivalent to, uh, like if you look at it from internet networking, we have, uh, we have, we have, um, we have Wi-Fi networking right now, but there's also mesh networking, which is a whole other way of getting the same old internet that you love, uh, know and love. Blockchain is very much similar. It is a, uh, something that we can see in the future. It has a lot of, uh, cool implications because what this is, is it's a public ledger that is decentralized where you have this thing called a hash where basically each block, um, disseminated across all of uh, computerdom, you have people that are hashing out this ledger, and the only way, just like you have a, a bank account, you know, it's uh, you only it can only come out one way. You have to it has to be reconciled, otherwise something went wrong, and that's where the implications of currency comes in because you can't counterfeit it, uh, which is really cool, and it's public. Everybody can see it. There's, there's no, oh, how much, how much coins are out there? How much, how much money is out in the U S economy? There is no, we know it like it's, it's, it's publicly viewable. Uh, and I'm doing a very boiled down version of this folks. If there's, if there's some techs out there that are going, AJ, you're not going. I know I'm just boiling it down to the, the, the basic uh, topic here. There, uh, there's some links in the show notes with regards to like ICOs and, and the basics of, of cryptocurrency and stuff. But what I wanted to hit on this is. When you're looking at a trend and you're like, oh, everybody's jumping on it, that means the boat already sailed. Um, and this is something, again, that is ill-defined, uh, at least in the United States, uh, maybe better defined in the country that you're listening to us in. But um, you can keep an eye on the technology of blockchain and keep your ear to the ground to, when it comes to the coin st uh, side of things. Yeah. I, I, you know, I saw something in 2008 and 2009 yeah. that is very similar to where a lot of people had the fear of missing out and a lot of, a lot of people wanted to get on the, the train uh, of easy money. Yeah. And uh, unfortunately, it involved a lot of zero percentage, uh, zero mortgages. Uh, I forgot the name. It was about five or so, uh, you know, seven or eight years ago. But unfortunately, that market crashed and a whole lot of people lost a whole lot of money. Uh, and had homes that they could not afford on uh, the zero interest mortgage that they were pretty much speculating that the home prices would rise to a place that they can just flip the house. It's similar mm. in, in, in a very distant analogy. Right. And we we don't want to miss out. We are we, we are dazzled by a whole lot of money and a whole lot of profit and live that life that we're seeing in what the media is portraying to us. But it's it, it, very rarely will that happen yeah. and uh, it's tough to get in on the ground floor. Right. It, again, and for the essence of full disclosure, cause you said you had a wallet back in the early days of when Sato this guy named Satoshi and Bitcoin got out uh, as a grad student, that should tell you how long ago this was mm -hmm. early days of getting a wallet when it was not as easy as signing up as for a Coinbase. Right. I went down that road because of what I was studying and I did, I had, I, I had some light coin. Ethereum was not even no. invented yet. Um, I had a point, 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 point of a Bitcoin. I don't even know where that wallet is because I, again, I thought it was just something, again, as a tech, I thought it was interesting about the blockchain. I was more focused on the blockchain than the currency. Yeah. 
should tell you tell you how nerdy I am because that has a lot of wide reaching implications. Being able to have a public ledger on anything it doesn't have to be a currency, uh, Internet of Things, being able to to manage to be able to monitor and see everything on a network and how it is relaying or a supply chain or whatever. There is a lot of implications of how that thing works and having it reconciled. Coinage is just one avenue. Yeah. So anyway, uh, that's my last nerdy note of that. Uh, last but not least, this is for the ladies. We there was a lot of trends in 2017, but there is one that uh, a, 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 a female listener pointed out to me to midway through the year, and it is women who travel. Uh, this is a topic I again as a as a guy. I didn't even think about this. Uh, there is there was a Facebook community created. I think it's called Women Who Travel or Women Who Travel, Girls Who Travel. I can't remember the Women community. Who Travel the World. Something like that. Yeah. And there's a whole bunch of subgroups like Moms Who Travel and all this other jazz. And it's just an empowering group of women. Uh, it's a private group. You had to, if you identify yourself as, as a woman, you can get into this group. And it's just other women talking about their travels and solo traveling. I didn't realize that this was a hesitation. Um it was just very enlightening listening, uh, listening to this listener and stuff. And, um, my wife is an avid traveler or was an avid traveler before we had a kiddo, mm-hmm. but also moms who travel and, and trying to get your family out with a little one and, and trying to get away from the, um, hesitation of traveling there. Uh, this is a, a positive, uh, female story here on the belly and podcast where if you can look it up, the group, the Facebook group that I found, um, which I also did a little bit of uh, digging into. There is the, this closed Facebook group of about 30,000 uh, people in it called Women Who Travel the World. It's a Facebook group who's backed by, get this, Condé Nast Traveler, one of the editors, female editors, uh, who also you can hear her voice on the uh, the travel log on Condé Nast's network. Um, they started this network and then it blew up exponentially in this last year. And you see uh, just this, this discourse of people saying, Hey girls, you can, you can travel and you can travel solo and here's the ways that you can do it and do it safely. And it just is, it's an empowering story for, for, for a guy. Okay. Just really cool network of just getting people out and getting them outside of their, their comfort zone and being safe and secure about it. This is a great, uh, Anti headline from what <laughs> we've been blasted with uh, right. for the past what six months nine sure. months sure whatever it is and uh, it's it, it, definitely check it out got the link in the show notes but in 2018 as we're approaching a new year maybe this is the time that you're going to say you know what dog on it I'm going to travel to X and you can do it and, and I have a Facebook account and I'm going to join you know, find yeah. out this group and then you gain knowledge you gain information you gain power and wisdom to be able to have a fun trip that you're saving your shekels for right. and having one less coffee or one less lunch out and you're being able to finance that. What a great uh, way to be able to get get to a place that you've wanted to go in your mind but had maybe the self-defeating voice in your in your brain said, nah, I can't do that. They got your hookup with a whole lot of tips and tricks and yeah. and, and and support. Right. How isn't it wonderful to have a place where you feel supported? Yeah. And that's again like I'm I'm a guy. So I I can't do my full due diligence on this story. But you know, from what has been relayed to me about this group, uh it, it just this screams, this was, this was a, this screamed a headline that fits the mission of the Bellingham podcast. It is a positive story yep. that counters much of the, the, like you said, much of the news that we are inundated with. And it's an empowering story. And if there are any women out there that are listening to us, thank you, by the way. Uh, and you are uh, into this women who travel the world group. We'd love to hear from you. We'd love to hear how it's going. Send us a voicemail. Uh, Give us a call. Area code 201-731-8324. That's 201, area code 731-TECH. Leave us a voicemail. Love to hear your experience with that uh, closed Facebook group and see how that might have impacted your travel plans. If you had a good experience or not, let us know. Uh, Also, if you're on Twitter, hit us up. If you blog, uh, if you did a blog post about it and you want to link to it, let us know. Hashtag BHAM. The M is for marvelous podcast hashtag beham par- uh, sorry marvelous. <laughs> marvelous yeah beham podcast love to hear your thoughts on uh how you are able to uh use this group to travel uh abroad and that would be a wonderful uh, thing yeah 
All right, AJ, that was fun. I think we should probably stick a fork in this uh, episode and uh, call it good. So that wraps it up for this first episode of 2018, season four of the Bellingham podcast from the city by the Salish Sea. I am AJ Barsay. And I'm Chris Powell. Thanks again for joining us once again on the Bellingham podcast. You know, 2018 feels a lot like 2017. I don't really uh, see that. I'm just excited more than I am from last year. This is going to be a fun year. Oh, man, I put the wrong year on the show notes. Dang it. Oh, that's all right. Don't worry. We have edit functionality. It's great. <laughs>